Hello everybody, I'm trying to hear myself as well, hopefully it's working, as, um, yeah, we actually went to the cam, which is not the cam. <laughs> ATEM. ATEM. You're right, you're right. It's because I had already switched it to oh, the cam previously. You know what, to hello back. everybody, hi everybody, I'm Toby One, this is Durka. Uh, we're getting ourselves into the game right now, as uh, we already started it up. I've been busy casting over on the ESL <laughs> one, having my absolute, like, absolute time of my life, Decker. I could hear through the wall, you know, Toby screaming and laughing and giggling to himself. It sounded like a it, it was a hilarious game. Absolutely hilarious game. But I know what you guys came here to see, so we're going to go into this one. Actually, before we go there, let's check out what we're actually casting. So we have VP. They're one game up, but I hear there was some controversy. Uh, apparently, Fly doesn't have a PC. He went back to Israel and didn't get a PC. I don't know. Some people were saying he's given one to Moon Meander, who's moved over there as well. But I'm, I'm not sure on the details. But anyway, they couldn't find a stand-in, and the default win went to VP. Okay. But so they... Okay. So we at least still have ourselves a game here in a way. <laughs> This is game two, yeah. This is this is game two. Um, against Monkey Business, uh, Ninjas in Pajamas, Team Empire, Vega, Alliance, Na'Vi, and Secret are the other teams competing in this one. So without any further ado, let's take you directly into the draft uh, because it's already fairly well underway. And man, this feels so standard. Like, I've gone through two series today, and this just feels exactly like every series, apart from the quad fan out at the very start and the Keeper of the Light. Yeah, that's the only things which flag up a little bit differently. Yeah, Queen of Pain has been left a lot of the time now to like a fifth pick, just because it's that sort of uh, surprise now. You don't know where she's going to go, if she's heading to mid, off lane, or the safe Seconds lane. Queen remaining. Of that orchid. But Kotal and Wisp, Monkey Business have Five been seconds really remaining. those heroes. Recalling, relocating, jumping around the map. And their wins have been pretty exceptional. Plus their, their dual lanes and dire team the pick. Light. I think that's one thing we look for from Monkey Business is unusual aggressive tri lanes. They've done, you know, Tusk, Kotal with a dual lane. They've... Uh, they've also played PL plus Daddle and Lena. Lots of long range initiation and plenty of harass damage. Hmm. But this time around, yeah, Moon Meander Clockwork. Lena, I think we've seen it more from Crit, almost exclusively from Crit actually in the four roll. I can't think of a time. No 10 tell seconds remaining. But the, the option's still there. Yeah. Five seconds. Can we actually remaining. just uh, work out the details here of who is meant to be who? Uh, a Reserve monkey business? Time. Um, miracle is Miracle. Big Daddy is Big Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, oh, there, you can do the others, right? Uh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Gumon is Moon Me uh, Is it Moon Meander or Fly? Uh, Fly would probably be the one doing Angel. the draft. Uh, I, I, I mean, Leah is Crit. Actually, yeah, Fly actually has to be Angel because yeah. that's his girlfriend. Yeah. Um, and then Leah is Crit. Okay, okay. So. I can at least get a little bit of uh, perspective, because we don't actually have a ticket for this tournament, which is why the names aren't forced to be what they are. Um, but hey, either way, hopefully Winter everything is going to be fantastic as well for people on the live stream. As I've, I've checked the settings and everything looks okay. So we're good. Yeah, I had a, a little issue uh, when I first started up. For some reason, the mic's just, uh, well, my mic anyway, decided to go super loud, and I dropped that down a little bit. It's, it's funny, because your, your mic is showing up as um, too low. This one. Okay. Yeah. Strange. Maybe they're boosted differently. Yeah. But it sounds great in the in-ears. Nice. In the, uh, in the in-ears, it actually sounds great for you. I just don't hear myself Ten at all. Ten seconds remaining. Which is actually sometimes a good thing. Um, <laughs> no, but which one's yours? Five seconds remaining. One. That one? Yeah. Cool. So we'll turn you up. Reserve time. Awesome. Oh. All right. So Wyvern, Clockwork, Lena, Dazzle, SF, Shaker. It's it's very stable lanes right now. Like there's nothing, they're not locked into anything. Um, like Lena and Clockwork, like Clockwork is definitely going to be in the off lane. It just depends like if he has a little bit of help. Yeah. And Virtus Pro, this is their first official since TI five. We've actually not seen them for a month and a half. However long ago TI was, I can't quite remember. But Earthshaker and Dazzle. Still unsure whether Earthshaker will be running towards the offlane or in that support role. If he's support, they do have two pretty defensive supports looking you know, to safeguard mid the Shadow Fiend, which was one of the big reasons Earthshaker really did come back into the fold. You've got the Fissure to save him. You've got the ability to go and stack that large camp over to the side. And it's, it's Radiant SF. You're always going to have that farm capability. Mm -hmm. And it's Dazzle can reactively TP around. The funny thing is, though, when you have like an SF, when you, when you know that the farm capability is there, like you ask yourself the question, 
how do I actually maintain control of my own jungle? Like, I've, I've been watching stealing all day. Oh, yeah. And it's... And it's so difficult. Like when you have someone like Lena, for example, that can just walk over and you light strike a ray and slave and you've you got the camp, the camp is yours. So you ask yourself the question, okay, how how do we get more control? Oh, wait, if this was any other team but VP, I wouldn't want to mention it. Or the Visage? No, 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 no. It's it's not just the Visage. Like it could be by itself. But the Drow Ranger you want, yeah, don't you? The the Drow Ranger is an amazing pickup here. Because the Visage and the Dazzle are being now supports, which means this Earthshaker fills the offlane role. He's your initiator. So you're looking for your buff-up. You're looking for your combo, and it's classic VP, remaining. which is probably why it's never going to get exactly. through the draft. So that's one thing. It's, it's a blatant ban for monkey business. And I Templar really want to see a Wraith King. We've seen Wraith King a ton from CIS teams, you know, CIS Rejects, uh, Empire. But Virtus Pro... I'm pretty damn sure they've been scrimming against all these teams. Wraithing definitely has been picked up a ton. Uh, with the Phantom Lancer ban out, I Dire wouldn't team be surprised ban. at all. But then there's still the anti-mage in the pool, you know, hiding away. But hey. back, back to your mm. point about stealing stacks, we've seen this shift where originally it was, we'll trade off, right? Where you have someone farming your own stacks and you just trade the stack for stack. You make sure you get farmed that Ten way. Seconds. Then it Remaining. was place that little observer ward, Radiant side or Dire side to watch and then you go and kill when they're taking stacks. You kill the leaner or the Shadow Fiend. And now, like you said, it's all about stealing. Huh? No Gosh ground ban. Oh, <laughs> goodness. <laughs> oh, that's the other hero. That's, that's, that's the other hero the CIS teams absolutely <laughs> love. Forget Wraith King. Screw him. You've got the Huskar. I just left this party. I just left this party. <laughs> I had a Huskar versus TA mid. And the TA went meld first. Hide away. It was not a good time. And this Templar Assassin is going to get his face wrecked. Like you're up against Visage Burrs. You're up against Huskar with Burning Spears. I, Ten seconds I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how you're meant to approach this. It's... Five seconds you farm. Remaining. Like, honestly, you're not going to really have the aggressive potential from the TA early on. It's just going to be up, uh, about stacking Reserve agents time. and farming as much as you can. <sighs> this is not going to be an enjoyable experience ancient at all. Apparition. Like, Ancient Apparition is now going to kick in. And that's one nice way you eat, where you can stop the Husker, where you just stop that regen. When he drops down low, he actually shatters. But the Dazzle timing is going to be absolutely flawless, or Husker just dodges the AA. It's, that's the only options. But they give up a lot of control for this. Yeah. Like, the biggest thing here is that I mentioned that Crit has been the one playing a lot of Lena for them. And I think that's what Virtus Pro were really looking at, thinking, hey, they need a mid-hero, Lena's going to be support. Big Daddy has now moved on to that role, though. And with that Laguna Blade, if the timing is right, if she can get her farm on and get that Aghanim Scepter to shred the Huskar, add in the Ice Blast and the TA, they, they have ways of dealing with them. Mm -hmm. But if you always focus on the Huskar, there's the other four heroes. Remaining. They've got minus armor galore. They've got right-click power and a ton of lockdown themselves. So you often get caught in a situation where you're like, oh, God, we've got we've to deal with him. We've got to stun him, throw ultis at him. And then you've got nothing left for the rest of the team. We're going to quickly... Wait, what? No. Yes. Yes. That's where I want to go. We're going to quickly change some settings. Nice. Okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> now, now, we, now we're cooking with gas. All right, so, Phobos with a quick movement. This is actually kind of nice where he can make sure he, he's able to get a lot of farm in, into this top lane. And the Observer Ward positioning will be able to see a hell of a lot as well. Stops the pull through as well, which is really important for the Earthshaker. Yep. So it's, it's control of the top lane that he was really searching for and it's what he's managed to pick up. Well, on bottom lane, they have the other Observer Ward that's watching the movement of Clockwork and also reveals the fact that he dropped the Observer Ward in this location. So countering this should be fairly easy. They might be a little bit concerned that... Uh, Actually, no, because he moved back out so fast. Yeah, they were a little concerned they put the ward a little bit to the side that uh, it could have been a ward closer towards the tree line to block up the camp. Seconds to battle. One soul. <laughs> OP. <laughs> SFSOP. Oh, Let's just call the game over right now. One is enough. Forget the Venno strat where you place Plague Wards in the Roche pit. Just go and kill Observer Wards over and over again. Man, I haven't thought about that strat for ages. That was so good. What, was it? Who, who was it? Was it Waga? It was Waga's team, right? It could have it could have been back here when they were scorner. Yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure. Uh.
this a while ago. So top rune's going to belong to Miracle, so he's fine with that. That's going to be a nice little refraction for him. And it'll be God to take the uh, the one on the bottom lane. So you've already got the Courier bringing out an extra salve. That's so they can play a little bit more aggressive up against the Templar Assassin. But Bottle is the end goal. And a Sentry Ward in for the Dazzle. I don't think that's really to, tr to control up Miracle. It's trying to look for the, the Observer Ward that Winter Wyvern places down. And in fact, that's very confident from FNG to already throw it down. I think that might be also the reason why he has to stay so close. He's worried that the Sentry Ward is placed down by Wyvern, and he instantly has to like, tango it. So ready for this. Yep. For the temple. The monkey's not giving him the space to do it. But this SS is really happy. Five souls on the first wave, make it six souls just on the first wave. That's what? the that's the dream. What's the name of the player on Crossbow? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's like that's Moon Meander. They just switched to count, so we were right the first time. Okay. Cool, cool. There's no way Moon is playing with the Wyvern. <laughs> it's not his style, bro. It's not his style. But at the same time, this is not a clockwork lane at all. Like this is this is the worst clockwork lane he could probably think of. It's almost impossible to regen through this stuff. Yep. Doesn't matter how tanky you are, Illidan controls the CS of this lane. And what are you going to do? Like, burn off his mana? <laughs> like he cares. <laughs> there, are, there is literally zero S's given. And he has to keep on burning through tangos every single time. Now it's going to get more complicated because it's a level 2 burning spear. So the damage is now doubled. And he's pretty much locked down into the level 2 Rocket Flare build. The fact that Visage hasn't shown himself and the Grave Chill usually is going to run himself away. There's no kill potential on this lane for the Clockwork, which sometimes you look for. You know, you run at the enemy support and try to find that trade off. But he has to go for CS, has to go to get these levels and find find an early level 6 as quickly as he possibly can. <sighs> Phobos failed the block. Miracle, however, has no refraction charges. Now, God's realizing at least this Semele because he's able to attack directly into the TA. But he's so close to getting his bottle, he doesn't want to commit the raises to try and pick off Miracle. He wants it for the creep, for the farm. They're both even on CS. And I, I've seen God crush this lane as Travis on TA. The fact that he's using water here, and the Dazzle with the Poison Touch doesn't do as much damage, but obviously it's on a shorter cooldown than the Arctic Burn from Winter Wyvern. TA is having a better time than I think he should, really. It, it's all down to Wyvern being there. Great job. He's he's back on his job. It's it's no it's no initiation though. Like Illidan's having himself a great old time farming up, and that's all Lil's gonna ensure more than anything else. I'm also a little concerned about Monkey uh, not having levels on this ancient apparition because you you kind of need to find this. This level six is so critical for controlling the Huskar, and he's and he's a long way away from having that. It should have actually been even further away from having that because Earthshaker, like Phobos rotated over the two minute mark to try and block up this camp from spawning and he ended up actually helping it to stack. Oh really? Yeah, so now they've actually got themselves a double stack on that camp because of that. Did, did, did we just see the Roshan spawn animation? Uh... Is it bu uh, reborn? It's, no, no, it's bug. It's bug so hard, man. Like the Roshan clock was actually completely destroyed. Oh yeah. Um... Uh, yeah. yeah. I was talking to Cap, like... You know how pro players, they started taking down Roche Timers and Ulti Timers. Casters are going to do it now as well, taking down when Roshan's taken so we can actually talk about it. Or is it like, hey, when does Roshan spawn? Look at the clock. Ah, we've got no idea. You know, initially we actually thought too that they isolated the cast channel so we could all click on things as well. Um, and I celebrating galore for it. And then realized, no, nope, no. Nope. Because one guy went nuts in one of the games I was casting. He's like, yeah, just all clicking everything. I'm like, oh man, I'm seeing everything. Just please stop. Uh, coming. He's got Arctic Burn, so he's able to escape out of this one, so it's not as critical. But VP, they've got really good control of this map right now. Yeah, the TA and the Lena are finding some really good CS, which is great for them. But I kind of feel like the supports are more important right now for Monkey. Like, they need to find levels on these guys to make it work so they can battle against, like, Huska. So maybe, this, maybe the other avenue is the fact that Lena's looking for the Ags. 
But that's the thing, you know, you mentioned battling. What's the sort of activation time of the VT? When do they start running towards the house? Shadowfiend's going to have relatively early timing on his items. The Huskar likes to fight early with his boots and armor. It's going to be like 12, 13 minutes when they go looking for these towers and looking for these walls. Yeah. Whereas Monkey Business, they want to farm ancient stacks. They want to get Yule's Axe on Lina. They want TA with the, uh, with the Deso Blink. Even Clockwork, they, they need him to get level 6. But I just feel that Virtus Pro will have the upper hand in the early fight as long as they you know, don't get overzealous and start throwing things too far behind these towers. I will ask, what's your hotkey for Courier? Uh, F2. F2, okay. That's to see the Courier, right? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Because uh, right now, Illidan is very close to completing that armlet. Yeah. And this is actually faster than... Uh, like a Husker, which I saw get two kills in a very short space of time and still picked up his armor, he got it by seven minutes. And Illidan's on the same path right now. With boots. Yep. No, we've been seeing a lot of no boots Husker just going to the armlet rush, but this really is indicative of him having a solo lane and really wanting to zone and chase the clockwork out. Uh, what, what's the visage level anyway? Is he up to level like four and a half? Yeah, this should be a kill right now. Isolates the clockwork and with the also that soul assumption damage. They're just able to rip through the lineup, nice and easy. Simple stuff. And G's got a ton of stacks over towards his jungle as well. The Shadow Fiend should have a pretty good time, but... Six minute armlet. Oh, it's actually a six minute armlet. Good stuff. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. There we go, yep. Perfect. And a six minute armlet on a Husker. Like, he's got a license to dive anyone he wants to. And the biggest thing I'm, I'm kind of seeing as well from the clockwork that's missing is the farm. Like, it's not just Tranquil Boots. In order for him to be able to have any kind of effect against Illidan, you're going to require Blade Mount. Without this, you're, you're lost. Without Shadow of a Down. The Dyer do have stacks, though. The Winter Wyvern is being working his ass off, stacking up that jungle as much as he can, and even find smoke now. I don't know if Radiance they're going to go to smoke is under attack. the TA. Or the Lena. They definitely know there's stuff going on in the radio jungle. Both supports have been missing for quite some time. This is just a. Uh... No, no, it's flash farm time. Yeah. Oh my. No chance of stealing. FNG gets so much from this too. Even just a booty had two troll warlords in there, so he gets four skeleton minions. These guys, by the way, are so damn bugged as well. They chase you until the end of the earth. They they killed a courier by themselves. No. Earlier tonight, yeah. Oh, no. Courier flew right over the top of the camp, and uh, actually, oh my God, I can't remember what it delayed, but it was a critical item at the time. Courier didn't trade the skeleton. Oh, the skeletons are just really upset. It's not as though someone like like killed their camp. <laughs> killed their master. Killed my daddy. <laughs> I'm not touching your daddy. <laughs> Bottom tower, dropping down really, really low. And Illidan really prioritizing into those burning spears, putting the... It's so it's just the 0, 4, 2, 1. And they have to share tangos over the... Yes. Like maybe even just one value point up in Invitality. Yeah, I'm interested to see what Uchi builds. Because a couple of American players, and I know that Forev, on, well, when he played for Hot 6, uh, the Hoskar, he would, he would go for Tranquil. For kind of this reason, he's armor struggle, you get Invitality to heal, and Tranquil is going to jump to be lame. You could always go the other direction and just get something like a Helm of the Dominator instead. Yeah. So that way you've got your, ba your basic regeneration plus your lifesteal. Yeah, that, that means you can farm jungle pretty much infinitely. And yeah. also, taking Roshan early on. Get the Helm, or even the Morbid Mask. Fairy Boss could almost kill off the Ancient Apparition now. He needs one creep to die around him to hit, it, to hit his level 6. So if he could do that, then for, uh, then um, whoever this Ancient Apparition is, Leia, crit, crit, will die. We'll get them to change the names for the next game. God. And with a double damage rune, there's no way Miracle's going to hang around for this. He's just going to back himself up. When's he going to have this mech? The SF? Sh Shadowfiend has a ridiculously quick build-up here. I mean, Dyer's I mentioned that he would have his items fast, but denied. this is crazy stuff. It's going to be like 11 minutes, maybe even three 11 11-minute mech. Might have been a little bit faster if that bottom tower wasn't denied just then by monkeys. Uh, looks like they found another... Oh. Visage, the only ones to find kills, but that's Lil's level 6, nine minutes in. And monkeys had to try and give the AA space. The problem was they gave him space without any kind of support. And the Ancient Apparition is merely a leech at that point.
so. Goals from VP. You've already taken out the bottom tier one tower. Is this when you want to be looking for more towers, or you actually want to be looking for more ganks? Both. <laughs> both Why at not the same both? Time. I mean, that's what they've been accomplishing so far. Go up to top, kill off the AA now. What? He can actually, uh, okay, the Arctic Burn will save him. The Cold Embrace would not have. And even then, okay, now he, now he can protect himself. I think Birdie's up at top. See the AA coming, they know he's here. This, oh, this is the reason why FNG is always going to be like, you know what, I'm going to pick up. Okay, well, there goes the Earthshaker. <laughs> <laughs> but they might... Well, you know, they're not going to lose the Templar Assassin. Oh, actually... Now that he gets the speed... The, he actually gets two charges on him. Yeah, good body of charges. They're actually looking to steal the ink. They're looking to kill Miracle is what they want. Like, haste rune or no haste rune. Like, you get that leap up, oh my you just follow him all the way in. And Miracle, they just need another spear on him. And he got refraction charges up. That should be enough to kill help survive, but that's four levels up in the Burning Spears. So he's still going to drop down a little bit lower. But you've got your SF mech. What is stopping them now from diving these towers? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Dyer's they can, they can just keep going. The sustain out of monkey business is Winter Wyvern. That's it. They don't have any other heals or anything to fight continuation. They've got decent initiation from the Yules on Lena, the Clockwork Hookshot. Is Clock... Uh, I'm assuming Clock is level 6 by now. I, I really hope he is. Uh, I'm not seeing... Yeah, he's got a Hookshot. He's okay, got a little green dot. Yeah, and, yep. and he's now going to actually buy him some space. Illidan being Hookshotted down. He can't armor toggle in time. The leader will ensure the kill. Laguna Blades off cooldown. Three seconds time as well. So FNG. His hope of survival here just doesn't exist. They prefer to use the Laguna Blade, however, to kill off God if possible. But they can't land the stun, so the Ice Blast comes in to help out. But it's now his Big Daddy with not enough mana being picked off. They move into the fish of the Templar Assassin, doing a hell of a lot of work here. Tower is under attack. Monkey business. I, I, I don't know if that was super fortunate for them or really well timed. I'm going to go with really well timed. They got their ulties up, the Ice Blast, the Hook Shot, everything just really synchronized and clicked into place for them in that fight. Sure, the house got dived a little bit too far Dyer's behind the tier one without help from the attack. SF Mac or the grave, but it was good to win. Oh, Miracles. The fissure block's going to be perfect, so Miracles got nowhere to go. Oh, they drop, drop, drop down Familiar after Familiar, commit the Echo Slam. He's still got Meld available, so there are ways out of here for Miracle. And in fact, now he'll just ball charge up and Dyer's run. So that's Echo Slam burnt attack. and Lil unable to get the kill on the TA. But all of that time, they still Radiant's were able to bring down the tier one tower in mid. But if they can take these ancients, or at least they stop got big daddy. Fissure one race. Yeah. If they can take the ancients, which looks like attack. we're going to head over and do, or at the very least stop TA from getting them. This is one of the biggest reasons you pick TA die side this patch, is the way you can bridge the gap Radiant's or create a gap for yourself in terms of net worth ahead of the shadow fiend or catch up to him. But here, where, where did she go? She's gonna look for kills. Still, I think you've gotta go for the Deso build just to give you that damage output against this armor strat. It's not yeah. just the minus armor from DP, it's the positive armor they get as well. Muscar has plus 10 from his items, then the Shadow Fiend has the mech. TA has a rough time actually outputting damage. He's trying to get in and steal a couple of these hits, but Miracle coming in too close, they're gonna Ice Blast in, and well, who's gonna get hit by this? Illidan will actually get frosted up, and that's why he's gonna be a little bit more cautious here. But they've already gone through two heroes. Ilden, he shouldn't shatter. In fact, they're going to protect him with a shallow grave. He could potentially leap himself after the Ancient Apparition, but not close enough for it by the looks of it. So, monkeys will be able to escape, but they lose their TA, they lose their clockwork, and they lose their stack. And now they lose Roshan as well. I don't know if they've got time. The hook shot's down for 42 seconds, and that's probably the bigger thing. The Ice Blast will be back, however, and this does cause significant problems. I mean, the Ice Blast is annoying. But it doesn't win you a fight without the rest of the spells out. And this Lena. Radiance bottom tower. He's got a heal scepter, attack. but the oh. visage is getting very close to her net worth. <laughs> You're in your keys. <laughs> they're, they're all standard keys. Oh, really. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, most definitely not. Or are they? Maybe I don't have. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're shifted across by two. Okay. I was, I was going to start bringing up crafts, and I'm like, 
Oh, no! <laughs> no! No! Eight, no! Eight and nine. Eight okay, and nine. okay, wonderful. For those who don't know, I'm on Doug's account because I ran into this studio. <laughs> so, I'm the man that might be controlling the camera, but also looking very, very lost. But VP, okay. So the graphs tell us the, all the story we're really searching for. But they've got all the control they really need. You've, you're actually even building into this Aghanim's already over on the Visage. So Lil, he's even tankier at the moment. Like, Gravekeeper's Cloak level 1's a nice little thing to have, but he's just got the Radiant extra extra stat, like, the extra points. Denied. And his health as well as mana. So, Phobos also with Tranquils and Sol Ring. Always having a Fissure. God's walking around right now with, with like, Treads, Yasha. He actually can Manda style himself out and make the Clockwork completely ineffective. And this Clockwork looks like he's building for a 4 stuff. He can't even get the Blade Mail to go up against the Husker. Yeah, I guess they want a the little bit of mobility if you can dead. drag the Husker back into like a Winter's Curse or something. Dead. So dead. So dead. There's no Winter's Curse if you're on oh. 5 and it's level 4. Oh, he just, look at he just keeps on stacking up <laughs> the burn! <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't run away, but you can't stop him from stacking on those Burning Spears. The tick damage when he came out was huge. Oh, man. Most business still have a great way of defending tier 2 towers and high ground, though. Like, that cannot be understated. The VP, sure, aggression, control, and the way they move around the map has been great, but monkey business, they've got Winter's Curse, Ice Blast. Those are two of the biggest ultimates outside of, like, Echo Slam to defend your high ground when there's a quick wave coming in. Yep. And there's no solar crest or anything here from VP just yet. So... There's nothing really to bolster up this Husker that little bit more against the right-click attack damage from Lena and Templar Assassin. But how close is Big Daddy getting to his Axe, though? Yeah, he's still Radiant's a decent chunk away. Is under attack. Yeah, it's, it's really problematic. This Fissure is even worse for the Wyvern. He's got Arctic Burn to try and get out of here. Yeah. But with the Soul Assumption damage and the Familiar's right in the tail, Lil's just in the perfect position for these kills. Didn't even have to use the Medallion of Courage. And Clockwork's too late. Like, he's looking at it, it's like, there's nothing you can do here. If you hookshot in, you're, you're dead. It's just that simple. Man. It's such a, such a great start for everyone. What's even our kill count? Wow. Uh, Lil. I mean, Blitz was talking about this last week when uh, when he was playing ranked. He had Lil play Solar Mid Visage and go Ags Refresher, and he got three sets of Chain Visage Bird stuns down. Like the first set, then use the second one, then refresh and use the third one. He is a ridic like, ridiculous player on Visage. He knows the limits of the hero, but he knows what he can pull off as well going forward. Warning bells are starting to fly for Curtis Pro. Where are they? Yep. That's the question that's being asked, and there's three heroes who are all invis. They're looking for their openings, and that's why Lil's already backing up, back behind the tower. You do get this Desolated now over on Miracle, so he's finished the job. Same time as Roshan is alive, so... If you want to have a crank, you can go for it, but this is also the perfect timing as well for a Husker. Use the troll to trigger... Wait, okay, yeah, but that doesn't... Yep. I'm not sure why. Unless he wants to... I think he considered dropping himself low by life break. Roshan, but then didn't want to, just in case, like, Ice Blast was got something. Yeah. There's no reason for it. So, Roshan. I like how, like, this is even here, but it's... Top tower is they're waiting. Attack. Where's the support gonna come from? There's, there's Passage Burge, which is now moving into block positions. So you can't hook shot from the north. If you do come in through the, through the lane, then it's already gonna get scouted out. So, the Ice Blast will arrive, but it's already too late. Roshan goes the way of VP. And it's Illidan who has the Immortality with the Aegis the Immortal. And the trade-off is for the T1 tower at the top. And you're perfectly alright if you're VP with this. It doesn't really mean too much for you if you want to control on the other side of the map. You can move yourself, like, even from mid lane, you can move yourself into the Dire Jungle. You don't really worry too much about the top lane. There's like one entry point into the jungle, while from mid there's two. And Dire, very, very defensive Observer Ward yeah, up there. It may not last for long. FNG's walking up with two sentry wards. Like, he may, he'll place a sentry ward Dyer's first, but it's at the same fortified. time, maybe you do place the obs because you, you're not even thinking a ward's going to be there. Attack. But the fact that Ancient Apparition is moving the way Dyer's he is, yeah, now they understand attack. why. So they get rid of the uh, the obs. And Monkey's just losing all sorts of vision. Lil comes into the mid, and Miracle's being forced back as well. So this tier 2 tower is gone. Dyer's the bottom of the tier 2 tower is gone. The mid. Fallen. I'm, I'm struggling to see a way that the monkeys can come back into this. Like, I just don't... 
I don't know how they can do it. Dyer's middle it's tower got to be high ground defense. Like, defend your base two, three, four times, and then you push out to, but look, you, to look for, like, like, second Roshan. But look what you're defending against. It's a mech with a double damage rune SF. You got Illidan, who's already got a second life. He's still got 1,800 gold as well, so technically he can have three, and you've got a Dazzle that can make sure he does stay alive as long as possible. Yeah. So the Ice Blast can't control him. Your Laguna Blade is still not Aghanim's upgraded, so you can't guarantee the kill over on the Huskar. And moments like this, like they're throwing out fishes just to say hello. Phobos doesn't have his four star for Blink Dagger, so there's no jump in for the Echo Slam, but they don't care because they know Illidan can just tank through it. He wants to drop down low so he can initiate in like this, and the Weave is taking away. That armor is starting to just be reduced as well as increase. Illidan's up to plus 28. Oh my, you can't even physically damage him. The Hookshot's going to arrive in for the Clockwork. There's a nice curse on the SF to follow up with that Ice Blast, but Huskar, Illidan, very early Shallow Grave, but he's jumping in. He wants to try and find some kills on anyone he possibly can. The Burning Spears will force the Ancient Apparition back. They get through the Ego Sea model, but they're here for Rax. They know they were going to lose Illidan anyway. Illidan turned that armlet on! He couldn't get it on in time. The Fissure couldn't buy enough space. Now Lil's moved too far forward too. This is actually what Monkeys wanted. VP overextending. Clockwork could be right behind, so now maybe he can look for some stuns with some control. Starts the battery assault. God turns on that Requiem. Phobos with a follow up Fissure. They've got Lena controlled. The Shallow Grave Burst. keeping God alive. The Familiars will actually pick up the double kill, but God's so low. His Burst. death ulti will now pop. It's going to be a triple kill, but the Dazzle will find that one. The Winter Wyvern isolated for the moment. The follow up stuns are just perfect. They're with the burst heal coming in from the Dazzle, they're able to find themselves with more. But the clockwork making it difficult for Phobos to run himself away from here. Big Daddy can't come out to help, they'll just let it go. Clockwork TP's out in time. Toby, the birds! These familiars, they're ruining monkey business. I was fully with you, like, yep, this is a defense. Defense number one Dazzle. achieved. Kill Huskar, kill Shadow Fiend, they're looking for you know, kill after kill after kill. They lose the TA though. Uh, did, did Big Daddy escape there with like 50 HP? I'm pretty sure he, he just like ran himself out, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Oh. I, I don't remember seeing him die. Nobody oh wait, no. Passage killed oh, Big he Daddy. Did. He did. Yeah, he died. He died. I remember. <laughs> it's all coming back. It's so clear now. Oh yeah, because there was a fissure into the familiars. Oh. Yeah, so we actually got controlled. But the funny thing is, though, VP still started this fight. Yeah, they had Aegis Immortal, they chipped away at the Rain Trice, took out a Tier 3 tower, but we're 22 minutes in. This is Assault number 1, and they didn't spend all their money before they went in. Like, Huskar still didn't have this full Sanj when he jumped in. The life wasn't there. And Elden understood, too, that he went in a little bit too deep. Yes. So, that mistake won't happen again. You have, well, you have, uh, well shouldn't happen again. Uh, <laughs> you have Earthshaker now with Fissure, so Echo Slam positioning should be a lot better than it was previously as well. And the SF has a completed BKB. VP's next push is going to be even harder for monkeys to repel. Because what are they looking really as an upgrade? I'm still not seeing this Laguna Blade completed. He'll have it by the next fight, though. Yeah. As long as he doesn't die down in the spot lane, TP's on the way. But we've got to remember that that fight in front of the Tier 3, Winter's Curse wasn't, you know, amazing. It held down a Shadow Fiend and uh, one hero. To him. The Ice Blast hit two heroes, not a full five or you know, anything like that. So there's definitely room for Monkey Business's team fight to improve. For them to actually get a better hold than they did previously. But this comes down to VP. It's, it's heavily reliant on VP making mistakes, bumping up around a key target like the Huskar. Or if Huskar's low HP, he starts ripping into someone like the Dazzle. But I wonder who the target is going to be here for Monkey tower Business. Because is under attack. Yeah, there's the Grave there. Dyer's Maybe they'll look to kill the Dazzle under first. Attack. Nah, whoever presents itself, I don't think they've got much of a choice here, really. Like, if there's a decent opening where you can actually trap... Like, um, the use of the cogs there from Clockwork kind of actually screws up a little bit more. He won't try and hold him out. Now, SF will be the target. Okay. There we go. He presented himself. And he paid for it. Yep. They take the rain tracks, and uh, yeah, there goes that Observer Ward. That was a hopeful ward planting. What's FNG got? So he's almost finished up his own four stuff. These familiars are still blocking that hook shot. And Clockwork knows it. Like he knows he's never gonna get a good angle. This is Lil. Like this is Lil's Visage. You you don't get a proper hook shot off with Lil's Visage. Might be the reason why he also used his cogs before to try and defend the racks. I just realized he couldn't get anything more. The fidget's perfect. 
the Visage Burst now going to drop down. That should double some with the extra damage. And your Ancient Apparition is down for 37 seconds. That's pretty important. He has no buyback, but no length to account. So there's no way to get into the base in that 30 seconds. But he's there. Okay. I'm going to die there. Miracle might be in trouble, though. Actually, then again, support stop rotating down. They, they have to reset the waves. They've got to push them back towards these tier threes because bot lane is over the river. That's really bad for them. And mid lane as well. Miracle done a great job to push that in. They're, they're TPing up. They're coming in from the side. Illusion's just got to keep vis vision, but Miracle doesn't know. He's got a Voyeur sitting right behind him in the, in the form of FNG. And now with the jump from Illidan, he's going to melt up. No reveal. Do, do they bring something? Phobos, he's coming in. He doesn't have anything, but he can Fissure the stun and then raises. They have enough area of effect damage. And the Dazzle Burst here with four heroes around him. There's nowhere to hide. Okay, Miracle has no buyback. And that's pretty rough for monkey business. They were actually looking for smoke and rush down there to help them. Just think how important that that death would be. They just didn't reach there in time. Mm -hmm. Elden. I think Hook shot it in, but they really have enough for this. They can't directly attack anyone anyway because that happens. Halbert, he leaves himself in. The clockwork just pops. Gilman, he's running himself in. That shallow grave is going to keep the Haskar alive just long enough so he doesn't bounce out. And the Wyvern surrounded. I think this game is over. Like, they. They're going to lose mid racks now, but they're going to lose more. Because what did VP really commit to get what they got? The BKB charge is still up. The Requiem is still up. Familiars are still alive. It's a level 3 Requiem too. Not only Familiars are alive, he's going to resummon. And he's got Nag in set up. Back up as well, yeah. Oh my, VP have slapped the monkey. Dyer's middle barracks. Get a Blink Dagger as well, the Nurse Shaker. Where do you go from here? Like the only you go all in. Like that is that is your chance. What all in? Like you, you're playing with like five dollars worth of chips against a guy who's got a million. Like there's no time for a slow game though. Yeah. No, you're right. Like there there is no other choice. Like, this game is basically over unless somehow VP dive into the fountain. Like that's their hope at the moment. Lil's back to what the living with a full solar crest as well as the Aghanim scepter. Illidan's having, uh, he, hasn't, he hasn't even got anything else since before. Actually, what's he got coming in the career? No, that's the Blink Dagger for Phobos. He's got nothing. Yeah. And... I actually thought he had more. I really thought he had more. Oh, that's pretty expensive, right? True. But he had that before the fight. Now, yeah, I can't get in range of no for the leap. no would just have to Yule Scepter himself anyway, so... Illidan would put himself in a bad position if he went. So Lil hasn't resummoned, has he? He's waiting. He yep. wants the first two birds to go in, get the damage, stun, and then resummon, go in with damage and stun again. And that is going to be devastating. The Ancient Apparition went to Wyvern, and I'm pretty sure the Lina just died straight up for that combo. This is going to go into the hands of the SF. Uh, actually, oh, do you give it to the SF or do you give it to the Huskar? I almost feel like I want to see it in the hands of the SF. Ice Blast on the way in, hook shot as well, and then they try and ice it, but Illidan, well actually, he gets oh, forced no. on the cliff side, the Shallow Grave, and he just flees back down again, Big Daddy's down for the count, Miracle's trying to snipe out Roshan, and he's actually managed to get it too, he's got the Aegis the Immortal, the problem is, he can't hold on to what he's got, the Clockwork is isolated on the cliff side, the Familiars come up, that is just one hell of a cluster bomb dropped on his head, the Wyvern also pops, as Phobos is able to chase after him, it's, it's, it's over. It's, Ancient it's apparition oh. against the world. It's over. Oh. What, what, what can he do? What can, can he do? He can get crushed by the world. And that's what he can do. 1v5 time. Come on, crit. Dyer's bottom barracks. Uh, he's not made of enough. Like, the Ice Blast can come in, and he might better hit on four heroes, but if he uses it now, then the Wyvern and everyone else will spawn up, and they won't have the Ice Blast to help them. So they have to let this Rax go. If VP go for GG push, then that's it. Like they just fight in 27 seconds. They can't do anything else before this point. Radiance top tower is under attack. Top tier three, yeah. Top tier three, go the safe route. Yep. Dyer's top tower oh, no, is no, under no, no, attack. No, this is not going to work, Moon. The, the, the familiars are still like sitting there without any damage because they know they're just going to drop. They're here for the stuns. They're not here for the damage. So now, here comes your Ice Blast. Three seconds till TA, and it will be able to connect, but God, he gets the BKB up. 
Laguna Blade may have connected there from No-Tail, but the Echo Slam! Oh my Phobos! That's the position to be! Illidan is just looking to basically make him burn. You might hookshot in, but Illidan, the forced up, will buy him the space. He can just keep armor toggling and leads back in, going up the Templar Assassin. The Shallow Grave gives him everything. He knows they're gonna burn to death. Phobos comes in with the no. extra control. He will actually do a miracle! He blinked out! He's still burning down, but GG! GG, good luck. That's gonna be it. So... VP take out the game, and I believe that's the series as well. Yep. Because uh, ignore the scoreboard that was sitting at the top. That doesn't count for Jack. It's bugged out. It's just reborn. Uh, that's going to be the series to them. Yeah, absolutely. But oh. that Huskar, honestly, but what could they do to actually deal with it? He was diving towers by, what, eight minutes, nine minutes? The bot tier one, he was just running straight on into it. And then he was running towards mid, finding these pickoffs. Miracle TA couldn't really farm that effectively. <laughs> and it was super rough for them. They they were really uh, actually we're gonna whoops. Yeah, you knew I was gonna screw that up. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, man, it was a control game from VP. Like the Husker, we kind of knew was always gonna come online, and he did. Yeah. Like they they had moments though. They had moments where I thought, you know what, this Husker could be controlled. They could win this game. Yeah, like Winter's Curse, Ice Blast, they had the tools, but they, didn't, they never had the opportunity to use them. Oh. And then the Shadow Fiend with a 10 minute 46 second mech. You know, usually you look at that 12 minute mech and you think that's a good timing. Yep. 10 minute 46 seconds, ridiculous. Yeah, it was, it was rough to say the least, man. Uh, we're going to call it a break for now. We're not going too far, though. We will come back. I say we, uh, Durker, I believe, is actually scheduled to jump away. Uh, very, very shortly, because yep. you, have, you have the defense stream coming up. But of course, you can check out all the other stuff we're doing for Join Dota right now. Uh, we have uh, our D2CL live stream going out right now. We have uh, our American Championships for the World Championships coming up later tonight. For all the details, because I finished ESL, I'll be back tomorrow to do that one as well. So go to joindota.com, you'll find all the details over there. For now, we will uh, go to a commercial break, and we will come back to you. <laughs> 